Hi, you're watching Fornicate. I'm Catherine. Thanks for watching. Um, today I want to do something a little bit different with you. Um, I recently just got back from a trip to Italy and I thought it would be fun to kind of show you some of the, the great foods that I was able to try while I was there. Um, this is going to be the first of a series of videos. Um, today we'll be covering Venice. Um, so I, I had a wonderful time in Venice. It was probably one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, the people are great, the, the city is beautiful, um, the food is wonderful, and um, that's what I want to talk to you about today. So um, th one of the restaurants that um, I had the chance to go to was called, and I have to look at my notes, it was called the Ristorante I do Vescuvio. And the way that I found this restaurant, I was just walking um, through the streets and I did notice that there was a display of gluten-free pasta and I wasn't really sure if gluten-free was big in Italy so it kind of caught my attention and um, the owner approached us and we got to talking and I decided to visit the restaurant that evening. Um, one of the first things that we had when we went to the restaurant was a sardine appetizer. Um, Sardines are um, one of the traditional foods in Venice, um, so I did want to give that a try. It's not something I have really had before. Um, the way that these were prepared were, I believe it was baked and um, it was topped with some onion. So the onion really gave like a great caramelization to the dish, giving it a little bit of sweetness because the sardines are saltier. Um, they didn't really have a super strong fishy taste, and I don't know if it was because it was mixed with the onion, but it was, it was a really great experience. I really am happy that I tried that. Um, for the entree, um, I was able to try the gluten-free pasta, and I did have that with clams. Um, and my husband had his with a seafood medley, so his had the clams, mussels, I believe there was some shrimp. Um, both were really great. Um, they were dressed in like a light wine sauce with a little bit of garlic in it, just really letting that seafood shine through. Um, for dessert, um, we had a really awesome dish. It was called um, a milfe. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. It's um, a traditional French dessert and um, it's made with puffs pastry and it has layers of um, a pastry cream. This one was chocolate. Um, I haven't really had a chocolate one. Um, it's usually, I think, traditionally a vanilla, um, but it was really great. Um, the puffs pastry, I believe, was homemade because it was just really to die for. And they actually had all their desserts in, um, in a case that was um, temperature regulated, so it was served at the right temperature and it was just really good. Um, we also noticed while we were there, which was kind of unique, that there was a photo in a basketball signed by Kobe Bryant. And um, for those of you that don't know, Kobe is Italian. Um, his father played professional basketball in Italy. So um, I, I do believe that he tends to vacation there quite often. And he had reserved um, the restaurant for a party. So I do know that this is also one of his favorite restaurants. And I'd have to agree, it was a really great. So the next place I wanted to talk to you about was called Gelato di Natura. Um, this was a gelato place right around the corner from my hotel that um, I just noticed walking through the streets and because it was so packed it kind of kind of caught my attention. Um, they had a variety of different flavors. Um, the one that I chose was tiramisu gelato which was just awesome because tiramisu is one of my favorite desserts. So I thought it was very unique that they had that as a gelato. Um, just so that you're aware, um, gelato and ice cream both contain cream, milk, and sugar. Um, gelato uses more milk and less cream than ice cream, so it gives it a creamer, creamier and like smoother texture. Um, so back to the gelato. Um, the tiramisu gelato was really great. There were um, really strong hints of that espresso coming through and they also had like little bits of the lady fingers that you would get in a traditional tiramisu which was really awesome. Um, and they actually had an option for a gluten-free cone which I thought was pretty unique. I haven't seen that even in ice cream shops here in the US. Um, which I did, ha I did choose to try. Um, 
it was a bit harder than a regular cone, but it actually worked out well because as the gelato was melting, it kind of held up a little better as like your ice cream cone usually tends to. The last place I wanted to talk to you about was called the Trattoria a la Colonnette. Um, I found this place, I was looking for a place for dinner and walking around and it was like in this really like lovely kind of looking alley. There was outdoor seating and there was like pretty lighting. Um, so I decided to check out the menu. I liked what was on the menu. So I sat down and had dinner there. Um, the first uh, item that we had um, as an appetizer was a creamed codfish appetizer, which was kind of different. I'd never seen anything like that. It was like a creamed codfish, but it was similar to um, like a tuna fish salad. The codfish was not um, very fishy as sometimes a tuna fish would be. Um, and it almost seemed like the fish may have been pureed because um, it was a very smooth texture. It was served um, in a ball on top of a polenta. And a polenta is, it just gives it a neutral kind of flavor, but um, instead of a bread, it's um, like a nice compliment. I really enjoyed that appetizer. Um, I had the, the seafood risotto as the entree um, that was served for two people. Um, this is another traditional dish that Venice is known for, so I did want to try that while I was there. Um, this was a really great risotto with a great mixture of mostly shellfish. Um, there was calamari and clams and mussels, and um, I really did enjoy that, that entree as well. Um, the last thing that I, I had was a chocolate dessert. Um, I'm not sure the name of this dessert. It was a chocolate ball, so it was a hard outer shell of a chocolate. Um, inside was almost like a chocolate cake and um, a very rich dessert and just a wonderful compliment to, to the dinner. Overall, I would say my food experience in Venice was just great. Um, the way that I found the restaurants that I visited um, was just walking through the streets and taking a look at the menus um, that they had posted outside of the restaurants before making a decision to go eat. And I did not have one bad experience while I was there. Um, so, that, I mean, that really says something about the food there. Um, if you do have a chance to vi visit Venice, it's a beautiful place and I think you would really enjoy it. Um, this is going to be the first of a series of videos that um, I'm going to post for you. The next one will be um, Rome. And while I was in Rome, I did take a cooking class, which was really fun. So make sure you subscribe, hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already. And that'll give you a notification when that next video is up. Um, I'm also going to post some of the popular and traditional foods for Venice. Um, if you wanted to take a look, I'm going to have that in the comment section below this video. So check that out as well. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'm Catherine again, and I'll see you soon with another video.